Tracy and that's Tyson. Right on. And how did you guys, uh, well, your, your nickname seems kind of obvious. Mine? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but how did you end up with Odie? Odie is actually short for outside dog. In 2013, I hiked with several groups and things like that. And so I was called outside dog until trail days. And then at trail days, it was shortened to Odie. Right on. And how did you get your name? I've had him for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get a trail name, actually. His cool. name is Tyson because he bites. He doesn't bite. He doesn't bite. Does he bite? <laughs> is he an ear biter? <laughs> no, he doesn't no, bite. No, he doesn't bite at all. But his name is Tyson. <laughs> okay. He's my step dog. Your step dog. I like that. Okay, so uh, tell us about the uh, the Hiker Yearbook. So the Hiker Yearbook is um, four years old now. I have three three books. The first year we did was in 2014, and basically, me, Mima, and Patchouli got together in 2013 and said, you know, hey, if we created this book to reconnect hikers after the trail, it would just be basically pictures of hikers who are attempting a through hike. And then in the back, we would put a uh, directory, summit photos. <laughs> so the directory is trail name, real name, and then email. And the idea is when you hike the Appalachian Trail, there's, you know, 2,000 people out here all by trail name. You get home and it's really hard to find somebody by the name of Twinkle Toes. So um, we set the foundation in 2014 and started, and then um, I've been on my own with the project for a year since the 2016 one. And um, you know, it still it just sticks to its core values. I get to live out here on trail and go to hiker towns and things like that. And then we uh, photograph hikers that we see and go to trail days and. I don't know, but the idea is just reconnecting hikers after the trail. Simple. I mean, that's very cool. So, how does it work? Like, uh, do, how do you get in touch with them to get the book to them? How, how can they get their copies? Okay, so the word that we try to spread is if you're hiking on trail, like this year in 2017, 200 miles or more, um, hikeryearbook.com, and you upload your own photo and it asks for your trail name and your real name and then it asks you if you want your email in the directory in the back and um, that's you know like I said that's the point of the book to get everybody's contact information out there but um, and then same thing hikeryearbook.com we sell them for $59 the, uh, we are trying to break even on this project but um, you know like I say it's still it's still a young project but um, and then we give them out for free to hostels and things like that along the way but other than that, trail days, and then I take pictures as I see them, and then Tracy takes pictures as well. Cool. So if they run across you somewhere on the trail, they'll know you by your little bus. Yes. <laughs> this is a, uh, it's a 1987 school bus that retired from the school system and became a church bus. Retired from the church and is now on a spiritual journey. So this is the <laughs> Hiker Yearbook Mobile Office. Um, it's been on trail for two years. It's amazing, honestly. I, I'm super impressed with what you've done with this. Thank you. It's the stuff you can't see because it's old. It's an old bus. It's got a brand new engine, brand new transmission. The bottom end is completely rebuilt. So this vehicle is actually better than most vehicles on the road right now, but it still has that look. Well, <laughs> things happen. Occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> so have you gotten, has it, uh, has it had any memorable breakdowns, strategy anywhere? The tire fell off when, yeah. when I first got the bus, which is what prompted the total rebuild of everything. Uh, but I was driving down the road and the tire completely fell off. Um, that was fun. But one time I was taking these three hikers from to a trailhead that I'd never been to before by vehicle. And they were like, yeah, we just walked down this dirt road. So I'm driving up this dirt road and it's kind of steep and it's only like a one lane dirt road. And I'm thinking when I get to the trailhead, there'll be a place to turn around. And there wasn't. It just stopped, and I couldn't get the bus to turn around because it was like a cliff on one side and a mountain on the other. So thankfully, one of the hikers didn't get out, and I had her stand at the very back of the bus and like guide me as I backed down the mountain for like a mile to get, to get back to like a regular road. That sounds terrifying. <laughs> I mean, I went slow, very, very slow. <laughs> How does she handle these uh, washboard mountain roads? Uh, she does good. She prefers the flat interstate, I-81. Yeah, don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you live full-time in the bus, or is this just a seasonal thing? You want to take that one? 
Uh, well, for now it's seasonal. Um, <laughs> we're going back to Alabama. Don't quite know yet where to, so it might be the bus for a little bit at least, but yeah, so you, most of the time it's just hiker season. Are you guys from Alabama? I he's, am. He's from Alabama, yeah. There's a, um, a girl that, that works with me. Her name is Danielle, and she lives in Alabama. So I'm going back. She's been spending the whole year. I'll send in the photos, and she's getting the trail name, and the do you want to be in the directory or not, and all the contact information and stuff. So she's been working hard on that. So then we come together um, to, to push it out, and then the book will be printed in January. So Very cool. We'll be looking forward to that. It's only a little bit impossible to get it done every year. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, how did you guys meet up? Uh, at a trail... No, I can't think of which, what it's called. The Kickoff Festival. One of the Kickoff Festivals down in Anamakalola in Georgia. So you were both hiking at the time? Uh, no, it was just a festival. Uh, there were speakers that weekend. Earl Schaefer, actually. Or not Earl Schaefer. Gene Espy was one of the speakers. Um, I wish I could have met Earl Schaefer. That would have been yeah. cool. Yeah, Gene Espy, he's um, the second person to complete the hike um, uh, North Mountain. Because Earl Schaefer did it, and then um, this guy by the name of um, Chester something Wachowski. <laughs> anyway, he was the second person to do it, but he did it southbound, and then Gene Espy did it in 1951. He's wow. on the back cover He's of the still first alive. book. He's still alive. He still tells his stories. So he was at the kickoff festival. He's like my idol. Every time I see him, I just, I just can't believe it. You know. I mean, that is pretty impressive because. There wouldn't have been hostels. There wouldn't have been trail magic. No. no. It would have been and a totally uh, different experience. He, one of uh, Gene Espy's stories that he tells is probably the first trail magic. Um, I'm, I'm sure Earl Schaefer got some too, but this is the first one that I've ever heard of on trail, um, where Gene Espy went into Damascus, Virginia, and he had ordered um, just a cheeseburger and a water because he didn't want to spend a lot of money, and um, the uh, a man came over and started talking to him and everything and said, you know, what are you doing with your beard like that and got your backpack down here on the floor? And Gene said, I'm walking all the way to Maine or whatever. And he said, okay. So he left. And then Gene Espy goes to pay for his meal and he found out that the guy he was talking to was actually the sheriff of Damascus and that he had paid for all of this food for him. You know? so and so a tradition was born. Yeah. <laughs> Feed the hikers or they won't go away. Speaking of trail magic, uh, do you guys have any uh, favorite trail angels? Oh my gosh. Oh my god, Trail well, Angel Mary, Miss Janet, um, there's the hot dog people, um, the ones that, that you jump off the bridge. Don't oh, jump off the bridge, oh. but the place yeah. that you jump <laughs> okay. off the bridge. <laughs> <That was amazing. laughs> Wait, there's, what bridge is this? Where? Just south of Glencliff, New Hampshire. It's in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. It's not the James River foot. Don't jump off the footbridge, the James River footbridge. Yeah, that one's bad. Okay. That's, that's dangerous. Don't or do Peace that, Rock no. anymore. Don't jump off the Peace Rock anymore. Don't jump off stuff. <laughs> jump off things. <laughs> <laughs> jump off he jumps carefully. up a lot. Too much. <laughs> um, oh my God! There's just there's so many so many trail angels that just give themselves to the trail. Um, like the, there's one guy named the Omelet Man, and he actually comes out every single day, yeah. every day, and he's there for about 12 hours a day, and he cooks omelets, unlimited eggs, all this food. Um, I think the record's like 25 eggs in an omelet, and that's just the eggs. Then he puts ham, onion, pepper. Yeah. I don't know how they ate it. And then <laughs> the hostel owners themselves are trail angels because they don't. You can't make money running a hostel. They all, they all find that out. So, um, you know, Doc Spice here at um, Angel's Rest, um, Honey and Bear, the cabin in Andover. I asked him, he's in his upper 80s, I said, why did you start a hostel and everything? He said, well, all my friends that were getting old were just getting old and dying. So I wanted to get old and have something around me to do. So that, and that's, that's it. Like, he doesn't care about anything else except for just taking care of the hikers. And, you know, so the angels are the heartbeat of the trail. Right on. Well, I mean, you know, I think it's easy to, to be good to hikers because, generally speaking, you guys are such a, a friendly, kind-hearted bunch. Except when drunk. Oh, gosh. <laughs> which, yeah, which is why we don't have that here. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'd it say 99% of the hikers are great people. Every now and again, you're going to get one guy, you know, and um, that it's just part because the the trail isn't immune to anything. There's all types of people are out here, but I think that it does generally make you a better person, honestly, just being out here in this community. I agree. I agree. So, uh, other than uh, the older gentleman there, what was his name? Gene Espy. Other than Gene, do you have any uh, favorite trail characters that you've met up with? Oh, see, Baltimore Jack was one of my favorites. Um, I knew him for a while. And um, uh, Mala, uh, let's see, there's, um, you know, the Ice Cream Man, Bill Ackerley. Um, uh, it's so many just, just legends that are just part of the trail. This guy named Rock Ocean, you know, the, he's young and he drives up and down the trail. There's so many just this amazing stories. You hear about people coming out here and, and doing the trail with one leg. Bi Bionic Woman had a prosthesis. Um, you hear just, uh, like she fell in a ship from a rock climbing accident, lost her leg from the knee down, was in physical therapy with her leg brace, and they were having her walk on a treadmill, and she said, oh, if you're just going to have me walk, I'll go hike the Appalachian Trail. But um, she was one that did it. She did it in 2015. But, yeah, the stories are endless. And that's, we actually we call this the endless story. And um, the way that, because I don't put a lot of words in it, but um, the way that you actually read this book is you put it in the hands of a hiker that hiked that year, and the next thing they know, they'll be pointing, and they'll be like, like, oh my god, like, Pinky, that's the one that we went to that one town and that one thing happened. And, oh, over here, that's when we did this and did that. So, I guarantee a million memories in every book, for sure. It's the never-ending story. Never-ending story. The, the trail is about the people. It and is. We are just blessed and lucky that we're allowed to be out here doing this. Like. It's, in, it's incredible to, to be able to walk up and down this trail and to drive up and down this trail and hang out at different places and just welcomed into people's homes. Um, we're not homeless, we're locationally independent. <laughs> <laughs> and if I had a job, I would never be able to afford to do this. <laughs> Peppa had the property and um, there was the trailer on it and things like that, but my God, coming back only two years later, there's the bathhouse and the bunkhouse and the and the little kitchenette downstairs and the laundry and the Wi-Fi. It's uh, this place is it, it just popped out of nowhere and this is this is a like and it's in the perfect spot for the, the hikers to come in. I highly recommend Angel's Rest. It's in Parisburg, Virginia, which is one of my favorite little towns. So um, and you can actually see Angel's Rest Hostel from Angel's yeah, which Rest. I, just found them. <laughs> I have heard that, but of course I'm not a hiker, so I, I don't I don't think there's, I've ever seen yeah, it. Yeah, there's like an outcropping where you can see down, and she said you can see this mural now. That's the, the rumor. Yeah. That's the rumor. I, I don't know. You might need some binoculars or eagle eye sight, but. I have to get up there with a zoom lens yeah. one day. There you go. Well, I mean, if you could drop me by helicopter. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this, this needs to be one of those Start places that's a stop for even the ones that are just driving through. This is, this is, a, this is a good one. Very yeah, cool. Day pass, it looks like. Just hang out. What's the day pass? Oh, the day pass is uh, for five bucks. You could come and use the shower and the laundry yeah. and hang out yeah. and watch that's TV or awesome whatever, day. hang out on the porch. Shower and laundry for five dollars? Wow. I mean, yeah, seems like a deal to me. <laughs> that is. The only, the only way to get shower and laundry for $5 is to take a $5 shower with, with your clothes on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, living, he's not. Living he's an extroverted life. <laughs> he doesn't know the meaning of the label. I'm stuck in an extrovert life. <laughs> Woohoo! Into the tree. No. <laughs> <laughs> hike the trail on that next. Now that sounds like a challenge. <laughs> Can you ride it? No. <laughs> You're like, no, that's nonsense. I'm not doing that. I can't even ride a bike with my <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. I will.